All right. Hi, y'all. Oh, oops. That's showing my, uh, my hunter schools. Let's not do that. <laughs> All right. So, um, oh, my VS code definitely is not working, but that's okay. Um, it's been a little bit, but that's okay. Um, today we will be working on basically exactly the same thing we have been for some time. Um, and that means it's time for some more rust, which is fun. Um, <sighs> so last we were here, um, what I remember we were doing was we were trying to work on this bit. Where, when the, um, when the WebSocket receives... Ooh, let me turn this on so that way this works a little better. There we go, much better. Alright, now you can actually see my face. Um... But anyways, as I was saying, um, last thing I remember what we were doing was when um, we receive a new message that we want to send over Laura, um, then what we need to do is we need to take the message and essentially split it up into all of its different frames, which are just, you know, the broken up message. Um... So the way I was doing this was I essentially just matched anywhere from 1 to 50 characters. Um, it should be fine. Um, I did a little bit of reading and I realized that um, this works, I believe, um, because of the fact that th I only have capture groups here, so I think I don't actually need to to do like unwrapping, unwrapping safety and that kind of stuff. Um, this being said, I obviously don't trust myself. So I think the solution is maybe I'm just going to continue to do this kind of like unwrapping safety stuff because it, it's better than having everything go absolutely kaboom. Um, let me show you what, the, what led me to think that. Though. So here, <clears throat> The way that this works is, it says note that all of the unwraps are actually okay for this regex because the only way for the regex to match is if all of the capture groups match. This is not true in general though. Um, given that, see here's the thing, I don't know what that means because I'm not that good with regex and like how do you do this stuff? But you see, The only way for the regex to match is if all of the capture groups match. And on my code, oops, hold on, oh, hold on, there we go. And in my code, the only way for this regex to match is if this capture group matches, which in theory means I should be able to just unwrap because it actually like, because in the end, if there is no match, it won't try to parse, I think, because we're doing, a we're doing an iteration on all of the captures, which theoretically means that there's, like, I don't know. I could just be spouting nonsense for all I know here, and I could this all could just be a mistake, but um, I'm going to replace this with an unwrap and to, uh, no, I'm just going to replace it with an unwrap and we're just going to let it be there. Um... And then I'm gonna parse it as string. Hello, Scally. Um, welcome to the stream. Thank you for following. How's it going? How's it going? How are you doing? Um, I'm going to grab my shoes. Give me one moment. I'm also gonna turn up the brightness on this a little bit because it's a little dim. Ah, that's much better. So, oh, nope, my shoe is not on, never mind, I lied. There we go. Much better. Yeah. Welcome to the second camera.
That wasn't bad. Um, didn't underflip, which was good. Hopefully that looks a little better so that way it's not showing so much of the mat and more of like the actual meat. Alright. So. Um, let's see. So this does give me a string. I can do this. Okay, so with this segment body, I should be able to... Hmm. Huh. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to go... Let... Um... No. Yes. Maybe. Hold on. If I go... Just... Blah, temporary... So I'm going to make a temporary variable and I'm going to set it to a... Message... Uh... No. It would not be a message. It would be a frame. Um... Hello, Wombat. Um, thank you for the follow. I guess I'm getting up to do another backflip. Ah, okay, yes. Hello, Wombat. How you doing, man? How's it going? Ah. Uh, backflip in an aerial. Here we go. Man! Damn, you guys really want to torture me. Alright, it's okay. Hello, Longmo. Welcome to the stream. How's it going? How you doing? Oh, okay. Hi, Longmo. Haha. <laughs> Another one indeed. Alright. There we go. I think I'm finally caught up. <laughs> Alright. So. Let's change that to press. There we go. Alright. So. Um, here, if I try to make a frame, I do this. Apparently, frame isn't imported yet because I forgot to do this. Use super uh, frame. We're gonna do that now. From here, um, I should be able to do make a new frame here, like this. That will obviously be needed its fields. Um, that's not the way that this works. I forgot. I should not be doing this. Um, Laura on Rasby, interesting, yes. Um, Laura on Rasby, indeed. Um, if you look at the picture right above my head, um, that's uh, the picture of the, the Raspberry Pis that I'm using. Um, what those have is a POE hat on top of the Pi with pass-through um, pins that then um, I attach the Laura hat, which is the smaller board with the antenna on top of it. I've worked with all our Laura Engine devices which run for years on a battery. Yeah, um, my previous experience with Laura was actually with, um, these little things called Lopies, um, made by Pycom. I don't know if you've heard of them, but yeah, it's, um, Laura's, Laura's pretty crazy. It's awesome. I love it. Um, oh, my watch is telling me that I have achieved my December challenge. Cool. I messed around with Lopies. Yeah, I mean, I personally love Lopies. Um, in the sense that they're really nice tools to, like, get started in the, like, the, the low-power, like, microcontroller and IoT kind of a world. Um, the fact that you can only program in Python for them, um, I think is a little bit, is a little bit restricting for, like, commercial applications. Um, but other than that, it's still really nice. Um... It is unfortunate that Pycom is going bad out of business. Um, it would be nice if someone bought them up, but you know. Unfortunately, the Pycom business is a little bit of a small one. There may not be people who are, you know, willing to put that kind of money to invest in that. Um, can I go new frame? Or do I not have that? I don't have that. Damn. 
Oh, yay. Ah, insert frame. That's why. We pre-made lore sensor boxes for work monitoring cracks in mountains slash rock walls. Ooh. Yeah, that's um that's a great use um for for things like that. Yeah, that's 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 yeah, that's 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 spot on. Um That kind of a thing, yeah. I mean, the thing is that, I mean, most people don't like Laura because of the fact that it's it's got a really low data rate, but in my opinion, it's like, what do you expect from IoT? I mean, the, the point of IoT is that you're not sending that much data. So, like, <laughs> I don't know what you're expecting, man. Um, Alright, so we're gonna make the bulk name. That did not work, actually. Actually, wait, did it? Hmm. Um... See, I. Uh. Oh, wait. NM. Yes. NM dot bulk name. Okay, never mind. There we go. Um, and then we go. Message data is actually the segment body. Ah, okay. That expects a string. So that's fine. Um, What do you expect from a protocol which is so low energy? A small battery can use to send a value for every 10 minutes for more than a year without. Yeah. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, come on, guys. The thing can go for like. A whole mile line of sight, which for one is utterly ridiculous. A mile line of sight is just insane. Like literally no nothing else I can think of that is that cheap can do that. And two, yeah, it uses so little power, like, come on. It's not like we're working with like, I don't know, a RAN base station here. It can go more than a mile line of sight. Yeah, I mean I I I'm, I just say a mile because like in my testing that I've done, like, I've gotten, like, about a mile-ish max, but, like, I'm sure, I'm sure if you're in, like, a no, um, no, like, no radiation, like, air, no radiation problems from, like, other people and cars and this and that, yeah, I can probably go much further. Um, but, you know, just, just, just happening to mention the number I happen to find, uh, when I tested. What, what is your problem? What is your problem? Oh. I see. Okay. Um, can I go, like, some... Eh? No? What is your problem? Bruh. 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 Oh my gosh, that's not what I wanted. Laura Distance World Record was set... Huh? How do you go 476 miles? What? This is so ridiculous. There is no way anybody should be getting 476 miles with Laura. Nah, man. That's just... Mm, that, now that's just... That's just a whole different breed of insanity. Um... It's a very, very high... Uh, oh, you went straight up. Okay. If, yeah, I guess that makes sense. If you're going straight up, then yeah, that kind, I, that I can kind of see that. They launched it. On, oh, oh no, that's what you meant on balloons. Four hundred and seventy-six miles via balloons. That's that's impressive. That is very impressive. Um. Four hundred and I can't. I can't even imagine like 476 miles. That's just ridiculous. Like, what's the hold on? Let me just Google something really quick. Um, distance between the the New York and I don't know. How about Miami? Like, oh no. Okay, that's kind of far. How about DC? Bruh. Washington DC SMH. That's double the distance from New York. Oh, I see the article. Cool. Holy shit. This is ridiculous. You can go double the distance from New York to Washington with this shit. That is unbelievable. <laughs> Goodness sake. Wow. Ah, uh, that's 
Yeah, that's that, that's something else, to say the least. That is some something else. Um I can't even imagine trying to, like, have the patience to do that. That's just... They've, they've got, they've got, they've got, they've got some, some serious dedication. Um. Oh, this is an insert brain. This won't work. I need to make a new one, bro. Okay, fine. Um, pub struct new... Oh, wait. Oh, I am a small brain. Oh, I am a very small brain. Um. Yeah, I'm pretty sure our sensors get more than a mile of range by default. I don't know exact locations right now, but sensors are on a mountainside, and the gateway is down in a small town in the valley. Huh. So the sensors are on the mountainside to measure the rocks, and then the gateway is down in the valley. I'm surprised the trees don't screw with that. Although, I guess, yeah. I mean, still, a mile is, is, is great. Um. I'm really surprised that the trees don't screw with that though. Because I would I personally would expect the, the, the trees to screw with that, at least somewhat. Um it's obviously not gonna be as bad as like, you know, freaking five um uh, five gigahertz and like you can't go through a piece of plywood. Trees were initially to reposition the gateway in order to get line of sight. Ah, okay, I see, yeah, yeah. That's what I figured. Um I, it didn't make sense to me that you would be able to get like you would you would be able to get line of sight with trees, but yeah, I mean, it's I'm sure it's doable. I mean, repositioning things isn't that bad. I mean, especially when your when your boxes are like maybe yay big, like you can carry them with your own two hands. You don't even have to have like a truck. This is not working. Hmm. So this is insert string, insert from string. So I want to do this, basically. So let's do this. But let's copy that insert frame. Give it an insert frame. Hello, oh. hello, NS Mutable. Welcome to, welcome to the stream. Thank you for following. How are you doing? How's it going? Let me do my backup now. Let me just get my shoes on again. There we go. Make that four. There we go. Oh, I do do ten. I did do ten push-ups because um, was it was it Scally, Scally that wanted that made me do push-ups. All right, so that's crazy. <laughs> and this, uh, that's the um, that's that's just yeah, not the first time I've heard that. So insert frame. Uh, what would this be? I would actually no. I still do want that new, that new struct. Um, pub struct, new frame. We're gonna take this and we're gonna go take this. But we want to require. Uh, oh, I can't cop. Okay, fine. I can do this. And then go bool, return a bool like that from there, taking a PG connection and a message. Um, a message that will be an insert, sorry, a new frame from here. And then we can steal these from here to fill this struct. And there we go. Okay. So from info and we can fill it from here fill the source mac fill the time fill the sequence id get the mac address and insert frame cool um i'm going to replace every instance where i do this with a function because never mind i shouldn't do that that's a bad idea actually no it'll be fine i think it should be fine 
Actually, no, it should be fine. Actually, no, it won't be fine. That's a bad idea. Let's not do that. Actually, is it a bad idea? I don't know. I'm indecisive right now, so I'm just not I'm just not gonna bother to change it. Um let's just close that up and move on with our lives and do this. Because I need to do this. Okay, so we're gonna go um frame frame. Insert from info. Give it the con. Uh or I might have to go I might have to go and mute pawn. And then also give it a new frame. So in this case, this will go below here. But this will no longer be an insert frame. Why did you have to move like that? That was a pain in the ass. Um, insert frame, give it a new frame, delete these because we don't need these. And then now we go uh, like this, delete this, call this new frame. We're going to get rid of these uh, extra spaces. We're going to take this, pass this in, and call that function. Okay, that did not work because that's not right. And nm bulk name moves, which we don't want. We want to clone it. Actually, can I do that? No, I cannot. I must clone the option in order to unwrap it. Okay, that's fine. Um, so now we're going to go frames did insert. Inlay hints are whack sometimes. I only have them showing while the keybind is pressed. Yeah, um, Londmo, I... I have them set, I have them to display by default because it's just, I use them enough that I, I just keep them up. Um, they, I do agree, they definitely screw with me sometimes though. Um, it's equal to frames did insert and that. So we're going to set this to true so that way we can get an and on it. Cannot assigned to mutable, immutable value because I forgot to set this to a mute. Mute hit mutable value, which means now if we take this, this will equal to this, and it will do this for every frame. If one of them fails, then it will, in the end, tell us that everything has failed. Okay, cool. This is good. Um, and we're going to take... So the message insert result is the message did insert. Um, and the frames did insert. So I guess actually what I need to do is I need to go like... Um, I need to do this, actually. So, we're gonna take this, slap this down here right before we do this. Um, and then we're gonna go let, um, let RTN result equals message, um, did insert. And, uh, message, uh, mm, frames, right, frames did insert. And then this is going to be this. Now we're going to take the result from there, put it into here. Actually, I got a better idea than that. We're not going to do that. I lied. Um, I actually want to change the way I'm going to do this. We're not going to do that anymore. We are going to do this. We are going to go um, message um, result. Then we're going to take this and we're going to do this. And we're going to do... I lied. We are not doing that. We are doing this. And then we're going like this. Maybe this will work. Will this work? Why is this doing this? That's a pain. Why are you doing this? Why can't you just... Bruh. Why can't I... Oh! Because I have it set to a format. Right. Um... Okay, no. This is bad. But actually, no. It's not that bad. It's okay. How on earth? Bruh. Okay, hold on. First up, we're deleting that so I can actually work in peace without having to deal with this stupid thing. Next up. Okay, we've got the result. We've got the two curlies. Um. Why is this nested? Why are you creating a JSON using format? That's a great question, Lawnmo. I don't know. Probably a bad idea, eh? Um, this would probably be a better idea. I already have certain JSON. Yeah, I know, right? This would probably be a better idea. Can I construct the struct in here? Um. Oh, hey, I can. <laughs> All right, I know exactly what I'm doing. Um, pub, um, 
return JSON pub result uh, is going to be. By the way, neat analyzer. Nust analyzer could convert, construct, convert valid JSON into. Wait, really? No way. Hold on. I must test this. Um, I must test this now. Wait, how does it do that? I, I, Lonmo, I am now very curious. How do I do that? I don't know how you do that. I am very, 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 very curious. I would like to know. How? How? I need auto parsing. If it's pasted as code and not a string, you get a code action. Wait, really? Hold on. Uh, copy these and copy these. Oh, does this work? No, no code action. No, man. How do I? Ah. 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 No. Ah. Try doing it in the global scope. Okay, cool. Let's try it in the global scope. Um. Dude, expected an item. Oh, oh that is so cool. Oh my God. <laughs> that is awesome. That is absolutely awesome. Okay, we are, yeah, works on nested too. Really? Okay, I have an idea then. I'm going to write my JSON like this. Um, I'm just going to write my JSON in here. Um, message true. Um, frames. <laughs> I can just write my JSON here, and it just automatically makes it. Oh, this is this is beautiful. I love this so much. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, this is so beautiful. Oh, I love this so so much. Oh, thank you so much, Lonmo. Oh, that is that is perfect. <laughs> this makes my life so much easier. That's crazy. Um, result struct. Rust analyzer is amazing. I agree. Um, result JSON, um, oh, hold on, RTN JSON, or actually, hold on, let's call it return JSON like this, this will be of this, this will be like this, this will do this, and now we can just implement these, that's, that's fine, right? Yeah, I can get rid of these imports because I don't need them. I can scroll back down to here, get rid of these, and then do these. I just realized I shouldn't have removed the import because I am a dumbass. Um... Import that and uh, also the Im eh, yo, import nope, import that and then there we go. Okay, cool. And now we go like not that, but we go survey JSON dot uh, from no from uh, from from value. Um, yes. Okay, cool. Definitely recommend at some point reading through all of its features and possible code actions. Loads of things you might not be aware of. Yes, I agree, Lonmo. Plenty of things I will probably not be aware of because I have I have no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> um. Okay, so we're gonna go. Uh, let RTN equal return JSON build a new using result using result struct build a new. The frames will be uh frame. Hold on. Frames. Duh. Did. Insert. I did. Why is this not working? Frames did insert. There we go. And then this will be um, messages. No. Wait. Message did insert. And then we take this. I'm looking into Raspberry Pis. Do you recommend the Raspberry Pi 2? Um, so, Zyru. Um, I personally would only go with the Pi 4B or the Pi Zero. But that's a matter of personal preference. Um, if you do not think, if you think that like the Pi 4B is too much or that the Pi Zero is too little, then maybe yeah, the, the, the Pi 2 is, is the kind of thing that you're looking for. Um, I, I just personally like the Pi 4B better because um, it's, it's it's just it's got that more power and also um, it's 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 relatively easy for me to find. Um, this being said, Steven has been continuously complaining to me over many many days that he can't find a Raspberry Pi. Um, so that's result unknown error, meaning I have to match this and I have to do this and this and then I have to go. 
um, okay, given a value, parse that into the value. Otherwise, if there's an error, take the error and e print line on the error and then return. Okay. So that didn't work, to say the least. Um, I think main issue is availability. No, we are not able to order raspberries for a few months at work, which sucks because we use them a lot. Yeah, um, I, I will admit, Raspberry Pi 2s for me seem to be really hard to find. It, like, I, I just, I start randomly looking around and I just don't see them. Um, Pi 4s are also out of stock in some places, but my local micro center always has like a vast sum of them. So yeah. Um... Mizzard. Hi, Mizzard. Welcome back, Mizzard. Um, I don't think that's the problem, Mizzard. The problem is that I want to exit the function here. Um, Pi 4s are out of stock here for months here, literally in any store. Wow, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe it's just me, um, and me, me and living in a city, so. Um, so, what type of products can you do with run? Program LEDs, host servers? Yes, um, so, Zyru. Let me show you something cool. Um, if you're interested in just playing around with Raspberry Pis, what I would recommend is the Raspberry Pi Sense Hat. Ah, uh, yes. Hello, um, hello, Flying Wookie. Um, yes, that is that is that is another good thing. RPilocator.com is a great resource. This is true. Um, but anyways, if you're looking to toy around with some stuff. I would highly recommend toying around with these things. These things are called sense hats, and oh, you guys tried that side, that's unlucky. Um, but I would highly recommend these things, because these things, they have a 9x9 LED array, which is really cool to screw with, um, and these also got all sorts of other, like, um, stuff. So, um, it's got, like, an accelerometer, a, gyro a, 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 a gyroscope, I don't know what it's called, and, um, and, like, a, and a compass, I think, um... And then it's also got a joystick, which is pretty fun. Um, so actually, my club at school that I that I that I started, um, well, I'm I've been getting them to work with the Sense Hat emulator um, that the Raspberry Pi Foundation has built. Um, but we're going. To, I'm hopefully going to be able to bring some of these physical things in at some point, which will be nifty because then people get to actually work with the LEDs and get live data and then be able to screw with the joystick, maybe even make like a, a simple Pong, things like that. Um, um, as you can see, there's a video here. Oh, gyroscope, accelerometer, magnetometer, something like that. Temperature, barometric pressure, humidity, as you can see. It's got all sorts of cool data that you can screw with. Um, as for your question about hosting servers, yes. Um, it can also host servers. You can run any operating system that you want. Well, any ARM. I think it's ARM. Any ARM64 um, operating system that you want on it. So um, that kind of a thing is possible. Generally, what I do is I either, either run Raspbian because I'm working with people who are doing this kind of thing for the first time and they need a GUI. Um, to kind of do that kind of stuff. My boss has signed up for five waitlists. Goodness sake. Yeah, that's impressive. I'd, I'd, lawn mow, if I were to walk into my local, like, hardware store, like, okay, when I say hardware store, I mean my, like, my local tech store, um, I could easily pick up, like, 10 plus Raspberry Pis. So I don't know what's going on in Europe, but something funky's going on there. Um, but yeah. So, I generally d default to either Raspbian, as I said, um, for new people. Um, I also use Ubuntu. I generally, when it's my own projects, I default to the Ubuntu Server 22041 LTS. Um, you could also install Windows if you want, but I wouldn't suggest it. Um, so I'm going to ship to Germany. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean... Uh, yeah, I mean, supply chain issues. Hi, Pan. Hi, Pan. Welcome back, Pan. Yes, it is time for more push-ups. Um, anyway, Zyro, you're asking about some of the advanced projects. Um, so one thing that I did last year was I used Raspberry Pis 
to make an artificially intelligent Wi-Fi infrastructure. Um, and then this year I'm making a long range communication system um, with a Rust backend, which is what I've been programming recently, which is this stuff you can see here, and um, a Flutter frontend um, that utilizes LoRa. So those are some of the more advanced projects I've been doing with Raspberry Pis. But I mean, there's all sorts of awesome, cool little things you can see online. Anyway, push up time. People set up entire home servers with raspberries. Yes, they do. They do indeed. Um, people have like set up. Okay, I hate to admit it. This is a little bit of. This is a little bit stupid, but like. I feel like, I feel like people setting, like, here's the thing. I saw one person who tried to set up a NAS with Raspberry Pis, and I was like, why are you chaining Raspberry Pis to make a NAS? That makes no sense. But, not my call. Um, one of the cooler ones I saw was, like, a home media system. Um, it was, like, basically someone's local version of Netflix that connected to their NAS, and then loaded all, like, the movies and stuff that they had on there, and TV shows, which is cool. Um, speakers and microphones in every room and connected to chat GPT. <laughs> uh, yes, Mizzard, you have figured out chat GPT exists, yes. Um, funny enough, with chat GPT, actually, um, if you guys don't know this website, so there's a website called codingbat.com, which has some pretty funny um, programming like exercises that you can do in Java and Python. So you see, one of my friends decided, you know what we're going to do? We're going to, um, we're going to, like, use ChatGPT to answer these questions. So last I remember, we used, we went into array third, uh, yeah, we, we, we solved, we got to solve this problem. See, the Fix45 problem, for people who have ever tried coding that, is notoriously more difficult than every other problem on this website. But after like maybe about 20 minutes of us fuddling with it and realizing like un and understanding how to like get ChatGPT to do what we want, um, it actually started working, which was ridiculous because then we got it, it then gave us the correct answer. Um, I should send you guys that video on the Discord sometime. It's hilarious. Just take a glance. Um, I never really liked embedded work, but being at my first job and writing software for hardware is so fun. Yes, I do agree. Um, I do agree, Zyro. Writing software for hardware is very fun indeed. I do agree. It is very, very fun. Um, I very much enjoy being able to just build all sorts of awesome nifty little things using like these tiny little computers that you can power with like a solar battery and just leave it there forever. Um, but yeah. Um, Longmo, you're asking me if it was Plex and it might be. Um, it might be Plex. This, this, looks, this looks vaguely like what I remember. Yeah, I think it might have been Plex. Plex. Um, it seems to uh, it seems to insert in infer plain STR type, not and STR. Oh, can I just do this? No, that didn't work. No. What is the problem here? Ah. I don't understand. Please help. Why does this not work? Hello? Huh? Why does it think your OK variant contains a plain STR? That is a great question, and I don't know, and I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> um. Ref V. Okay, I will ref V then. If that's what you say. <laughs> I have no clue what is happening here. Why is it that... What is going on here? Oh, there's an extra one of those here. Oh no, hold on. I don't understand. Why this thing is so broken? Why so broken, man? Hello? Why so broken? Okay, Ref V. Oh. Oh, like this? What? What? I am so confused. What is happening? <laughs> um, is the language you write for the Raspberry all subjective? Um, 
What do you mean by subjective, Zyru? Um, low-hanging fruit did not work. <laughs> yes, Sag indeed. I agree, very Sag. Um, oh, what is the problem? Hello? Okay, the problem is that this does not implement this, required by a bound, or required for WS interface models to implement deserialized. Huh? WS interface models? All of these things implement deserialize. What are you talking about? Bruh. So confused. Okay. Now what's the problem here? Is this the way I'm supposed to use this? This is not the way I'm supposed to use this. That's why. Because I'm using the wrong function. Hold on. Um. Uh. Ooh. Ugh. From reader? No, that's not it. Um. Sorry, I mean, um, if you can use any language you like as in C, C++, or in your case, Rust. Yes! You can use any language you want, um, because, um, Raspberry Pi supports whatever, like, um, Raspberry Pi supports whatever thing you want. Um, if you want to do, like, if you want to use Ubuntu server and run, like, a Rust server, you can do that. If you want to use Ubuntu server and just, like, do, um, Raspberry's, Raspberry's just run a normal Linux, yeah. It can run any 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 normal Linux you want. According to Mizzard, you can also run uh, Windows. I personally wouldn't, but <laughs> there's an option there if you want it. Um, okay, so apparently I don't know how to use certa JSON. Um, parse, like, object. Help. How do I do this? No! Ah! Certain JSON to string. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mizzard. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm very stupid. Yep. This is exactly the problem. Yep. There we go. Yep. There we go. <laughs> just completely using. Oh, wait. Hold on. No, just completely using the wrong function. Yeah. It was certain JSON to string. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that, 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 okay. That was a dumbass move on my part. <laughs> Let's not do that again. <laughs> but, anyways, um, this should work. This should work because I do have the return JSON with the insert this there. Hello, met to you. Um, welcome to the stream. Thank you for following. Oh, thank you also for following Zeru. Um, Zeru, I appreciate the support, y'all. How's it going, met to you? How are you doing? How's it going? How's your day going? Anyways, we are due for two backflips. Oh yeah, Lodmo, I do agree. Yeah, the survey docs are really, really good. It's impressive. Like, some all of the major, um, all, not all, a lot of the major, um, crates have some vaguely suspicious documentation that sort of give you the way to do it, but don't exactly tell you everything, which is always a little bit annoying. Um, but yeah, survey is great. The survey stuff has everything you could ever want to know. Um. All right, there's those two. Back to work. After I change that to six, there we go. All right. So this should be good. I think I fixed this. This should insert new frames for everything. Um, I'm seeing that there's a problem. Oh no, that's just a unused function. Um, I guess we can. I guess we can just comment that out for now. I don't really need... Huh? Huh? Why? Okay, you know what? I won't question the way that this works. But... That's really suspicious. The way that this thing is like... Hold on. No! Ah! Stupid IDEs, I swear. This, by the, by the way, this exact behavior is the reason why my dad swears against using IDEs, and he still uses VI to this day. It's because of this kind of insanity, where you try to do stuff and it just like, it just starts jumping around everywhere. Although, 
I think I may have sort of vaguely convinced him that it is time to like switch to something like VS Codium. Um, VI, not Vim or Neo Vim or Neo Vide. No, he uses his, well, okay, here's the thing. He uses, he uses VI slash Vim slash whatever version or like subsequent version of VI is on whatever machine he's using. But generally, if he needs to edit something that is text-based, he will always use VI or anything in that lineage. Um, he refuses to use Emacs for obvious reasons. Um, he says that there, it's for the mathematicians, which I believe, and it's not meant for the systems engineers. Um, and he also, up until recently, has basically refused to even look at an, oh no, not look, use an IDE. Like he tried Sublime, he didn't like it. He tried Atom, he thought it was okay, but he preferred VI. Um, but the thing is, is that now that like VS Code, and we're, now that we're using um, all these like languages like Rust, which has things like Rust Analyzer, I sort of managed to convince him that like he should maybe try to use VS Codium just so that way we can get we can do all these catching of errors and stuff like that that all these extensions do. My dad writes 2001 style PHP in NetBeans. What? Huh? NetBeans? That's like that's ancient, but. But, but okay, okay, I, fine. It's not ancient because they have been updating it. But still, <laughs> so why, why are you even writing in in like? I don't even understand why you would be writing PHP. But okay, I use Notepad, GVim, and Visual Studio depending on what I want to do. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, yeah, I I can get that. It kind of depends on what operating system you're used to. You see, my dad is a is like a Unix. Like, Unix master. He's been working with Unix basically since he started working with computers. He knows a bunch of, like, Windows stuff, but he is definitely much more comfortable with Unix, I think. Um, actually, don't quote me on that, but I think he, I think he's much more comfortable with Unix. Um, hello, Knight. Not... And not in think? I, I, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know what your name is, but... Hello, welcome to the stream. Thank you for following. How's it going? How are you doing? Um, oh, I guess. Uh, let's see. I guess it's time to do another backflip because I, you know, that's my, that's my policy. It's actually funny because, um, Recently, we were watching Silicon Valley, and the whole spaces versus tabs war came up, and he was like, <laughs> and we mentioned like the the VI versus Emacs war, and I, I still find it hilarious that people people believe so strongly in one versus the other. <laughs> but not my place to say anything, man. The funny thing about your dad is that there are version, BIM versions which can use Rust Analyzer through so things like Conquer of Completion. What? How do you get BIM to use Rust Analyzer? Huh? Like, that does not compute. Also, BIM versus Emacs or it's irrelevant XKCD. True! XKCD is the best. Gosh, it's amazing. That guy's amazing. People use Vim as a whole ass IDE. Yeah. Um, I mean, here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing, Longbow. You do have to admit, people that are experts at VI are experts at VI. And you tell them to, like, do something, they'll go, oh, and it's done. No matter what it is, it is done. In It's kind of crazy. Um, NeoVim apparently has built in language server support. Which is interesting. Um, I actually didn't know that. I don't think he uses NeoVim except on like his Windows machine. So, but I think even then he tried it once and kind of was just like, Windows and Vim is garbage, and then just switched back to Wizzle. 
<sighs> Anyways, so moving on from there, we are going to see why there are more errors because that apparently is a problem and apparently this is a problem. Okay, sure. I, I won't question it. The lint is yelling at me. I guess I'll follow it. Um. In curious, I'm curious for the development of lap CE. What is lap CE? Oh. 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 This is a. Oh. Ooh, this is cool. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of Adam. But it's specifically for Rust. Which is very, very interesting. It's very, 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 very interesting. It actually looks very interesting. I might even try this. Um, like, maybe tomorrow when I stream I'll have this working. But this looks really cool, actually. Like a dedicated Rust, Rust code editor. If this has like integrated, if this has integrated, um, here, wait, let me show, let me show, let me show, let me show chat what's going on. Oh, it's not just Rust. Oh, really? Ooh, I like this then. Um, but if this comes built in with things like Rust Analyzer, I might legitimately switch to this. Um, given that you're saying it's not just Rust. It is LSP support, so you can use any LSP-backed language. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Oh, showing the wrong screen. Right. Oops, my bad. Um, yes. So, this? Yeah, okay. That actually, Lawnmo, this is... This looks excellent. I might try this. Very good. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. See, when Adam was EOL... I got very sad because you see, Adam, I, I personally dislike Sublime. Um, early development, yeah, it's pre-alpha stage right now, but you know, it's it's, it's it looks really cool. Um, but yeah, you know. We shall see where it goes. But yeah, um, as I was saying, the reason I really liked Adam is because, well, I, I, I maybe I can't actually like saying words why I really did. But let me just explain what happened actually to me. See, I tried things like Sublime. I didn't really like it because it was kind of just way too souped up with way too many easy, with just Mike says, rip Adam. <laughs> yes, rip Adam. I'm very sad um, that Adam is now very, very dead. Well, not very, very dead. It is about to be very, very dead. Last I remember the, the sunset, I believe was end of this year, which is coming in like, 15 days. Hello, um, hi Mike, yes, and hello Sap, welcome to the stream you two. Um, how's it going Sap, how are you doing? But, yeah. I tried other IDEs, I... I really didn't like it. Um, Adam was the first IDE that I legitimately liked and that I wanted to use. Um, I think otherwise I probably would have just stuck to VI, <laughs> like, like my, da like my dad, but, um, it was my first favorite text edit. <laughs> ah. JetBrains IDEs are the most tolerable ones, though. Um, I guess, yeah. I see, hello, Pinhero. Um, welcome to the stream. Thank you for following. Um, see, see, Londmo, I have a question for you, because I, I don't know if, like, JetBrain has an integration for Kotlin and Android Studio, but if they do, I- it is- I, I will say outright, Android Studio is garbage. It is straight garbage, and it's amazing to me that anybody is willing to use it. Except for the fact that I guess it's like the only way to do native- native Android Studio- and native Android apps. Like, Android Studio is terrible. Like, the- the, the kinds of, like, I- just, I I should just shut up before I start saying things that uh, that will get me in trouble, probably. But, like, I never want to use Android Studio in my life. Um, yes, my dad does code, um, Mike. He, he actually runs his own company. Um, if you want to see his company, it is here. 
Um, their website is on their subreddit and stuff like that, so you can pick them out. He's um founder and also, yes, he does program. Um, they have a few different IDEs and advanced text editors. Oh, okay, so JetBrains has their own text editors that I guess I, I don't really know about because I don't use them. Um, yes, everything is good for with my life right now. Um, I do have one hour though until everything potentially goes very well, or everything potentially goes very wrong. Um, I guess- Oh, that was Johnny?! Oh, Johnny, you little <laughs> I hate you so much, Johnny. Why are you doing this to me? Anyways, I owe- I owe three backflips to the- to the chat, so here we go. IntelliJ IDEA has Kotlin support, and an Android plugin, which offers most of Android Studio features. You know, Lawnmo. I remember what I did. Yes, I used IntelliJ IDEA. And then I didn't really understand how to use it, so I moved back to Android Studio. Is what happened. That's what happened. I remember now. It's that I could not comprehend how IntelliJ IDEA worked. But yeah. Um, anyways, what's the team log at? That? Okay, sure. Um... And then, what was the last one? Ah, yes. That. JetBrains IDs are complex beasts. Yeah, to say complex is a little bit of an understatement. <laughs> Alright. Let me drop my shoes for a second. Time for some karate, let's see. How about this one? There we go. I have finally gone through my backlog of stuff to do. Um, gotta add 10 to this because Johnny apparently hates me, and got to add three to this. Alright. So. Hi, Pan. Hello, Pan. How's it going, Pan? How are you doing? JetBrains Fleet seems like an interesting all-in-one IDE. Um, what is JetBrains Fleet? Time to go look at this. JetBrains Fleet. Why is GSU disabled? That's a great question. Why is GSU disabled? Oh, there we go. Right, I forgot to undisable GSU pan. Um, however, I would suggest that if you want to torture me, you would do that tomorrow when I stream for longer. Um... Still, having been forced to use Eclipse, NetBean, Visual Studio, not code, JetBrains is the most reasonable, proper IDE. Mmm. I agree, I hate Eclipse. I took, um, AP Computer Science A last year, and holy, was that horrible. Because, you see, my, my teacher, she standardized the entire curriculum, because it's Java, around Eclipse. And I was just like, no. I hate this IDE. There are too many buttons. I don't understand what any of them do. And if you press a button, it does one thing. But if you press and hold, it does a different thing. And then if you press and hold, and then it's just like, oh, so it's just like a nightmare. Um, but yeah. So that's why I hate Eclipse. Um, I've never tried Visual Studio because I've never had the code in C or C sharp. But I do like Visual Studio. Uh, I do like VS Codium. Um. 
Personally, I think VS Codium is good. Um, it's a, it's like a reasonable, it's a reasonable replacement for Atom because I think once GitHub got purchased by Microsoft, Microsoft started putting all of the work that they'd done in Atom into VS Code, and then the VS Codium guys essentially followed. But otherwise, I mean, VS Codium is okay for me. Um, with the integrations, it makes it a lot better, and I'm, and I'm much more willing to tolerate it. Um, but yeah. How am I doing? I'm I'm doing okay, Pan. Um, I may not be doing so okay in an hour, but I will let you know. How on earth is Eclipse still alive? That is a great question, Mike. I don't know, and I wish it wasn't. I tried to do some C++ Dread. <laughs> Absolutely. I would never in my life want to touch C or C++ or any of, it, or any of those derivatives, because just, just no. Please no. I don't want to. I don't want to suffer like that. Um, VS Code is what I currently use. It's not my favorite, but it works. Yeah, I use VS Code Yum because I don't trust Microsoft and VS Code. Um, but personal preference. I mean, it's basically the same IDE. It's used more as a Java UI framework than an IDE. Really? Weird. Okay, I'm not gonna question that. Since you seem since you seem to really know how to use uh, Eclipse, <laughs> I don't. Um, D Beaver. What is D Beaver? Google. Google time. D Beaver. What is D Beaver? Oh, cool. Oh. Huh. Oh. Very, very interesting. Cool. That's, um, very, very interesting. Alright, anyways, back to what I was doing. Can't use Codium since PyLance doesn't work, and since my job is pure Python, I'm not willing to compromise on the best Python tool. Ah, okay, I see, yeah. That is true, that is true, Lonmo. Um, yeah, there are definitely quite a few VS Code extensions that don't work in Codium, so yeah, that's fair. Um, for me, um, everything that I do, it's all double supported, so I'm okay with using Podium. But you know, yeah, I, 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 I get that. I, 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 I get that. That's that's reasonable. That's entirely fair. Um, all right, so this year should be done. I should probably test this at some point, as in probably now. Um, I guess what I'll do is I will rsync code the rsync push the code. Um, however on earth I would do that, I'm not particularly sure. Um, I have too many terminal windows open. Permit to- that I cannot speak. Too many terminal windows up. And not enough understanding of what they all do. Rsync. Yes, you heard me right. Rsync. Yes, I am using Rsync. Um. This is because I have... Um, so let me show you what's going on. So, where is my, where is my thing? Where is my thing? There it is. Okay, cool. So, if I go here, and I pull up this one, and I tell it to do this, and I open this up, does this work? No, this does not work. That's a different window. How do I have, like, four different of the, okay, I won't question it, but, okay, here we go. So, since you're asking, Lonmo, why I'm using VSync, watch this. Oh. I heard I heard a sync push and I was like, do you mean git? Oh no 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 no, I don't mean git. Um, let me hear, let me show you. I just wrote a quick rsync script that hits all three. Well, I actually have four, but only three are actually operational because of like weird Laura Laura line of sight problems in my house. Um, but I wrote a quick rsync script that basically just copies all of my Rust, um, all of my Rust source files over to the other end. Um, it's really, it's, it's really simple. Um, uh, so I just go dot slash update rpies.sh, and then it does its thing, as you can see. It's doing its thing. Um, I will need to manually update the cargo.toml because that thing does not actually automatically sync 
um, because I don't want it to accidentally sync the entire target folder. Although actually it'd probably be worth it right now to just do a, a teensy tiny bit of research to see if I can exclude a folder. Um, let's see if this works. Um, let's see, uh, JetBrains fleet, nope. Uh, I don't want to look at JetBrains fleet. I want, definitely can't exclude, okay. Um, ah, okay, you have done it, okay, yeah. I just don't know what the flag is, you know what I'm saying? Um, exclude directory, yes. How to use rsync to exclude directories, yeah, 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 I don't, uh, ah, ha, ha, aha. This is, this is the, this is the, um, this is the solution. Okay. So, if I just quickly go, uh, vi, rpi, rsync, ya, ya, ya. So, what if I go, like, this? Um, minus, minus, exclude. And we don't do this. We just do dot slash dot? Can I go dot? I don't know if this will work. I'm just going to try this one command first and see if it works. Um, minus, minus, exclude, target. And then we're going to go to the end. Huh? Wait, 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 wait. How did I just do that? No. Wait, control A, control E. Wait, that did not do what I wanted. Wait, 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 Does shift A? Oh, I did not know that that E bind exists. Okay, let me show you what happened. So I was doing a thing. Um, so I was doing a thing. My cursor was over here. I hit shift A. And apparently, I didn't know this. I didn't know this keybind existed in the VI. But apparently shift A goes to the end of line and starts insert. Cool. Um, just Mike. I have to go as a short person. All right. I will see you, Mike. Um, have, a, have a good time. Um, I will see you next time. Have a good day. Um, okay, so we go target slash, let's just quickly, tr oh, nope, actually, I, I remember why I did that, because I wanted to do this, and now if I take this entire thing here, um, oh wait, hold on, do I have to command shift C, I do have to command shift C to copy, okay, so what, it, does this work is the question, I don't know if this works, It does work! That is awesome! Okay. Let's go! Um... So, how do I exclude multiple... Okay. So, let me just quickly go to the other one I was doing. Um, rm update pies.sh. So, what I want to do is I actually want to change this so that it doesn't just exclude that, it also excludes... Hello, Vince. Um, welcome back. So if I go target, exclude target, what if I go minus minus exclude, um, minus minus exclude update rpies.sh. You could compile the Raspberry Pi target directly on your machine and then rsync the binaries. Okay, yes, Mizzard. Um, this is true, but I don't know if you remember what happened last time I... <laughs> oh wait. Wait, what? Wait, what? Uh, I hope I didn't just screw something up. Okay, I didn't. Cool. Um anyways, as I was saying before, I nearly shat myself. Um, I did try doing that, but the problem with cross-compile, Mizzard, is that I don't know how to get the, um, I don't know how to get the binary to work. Because, like, there were some binaries, there were some binaries, like, for libpq that I needed in order to be able to compile the binary on ARM. Um, thick PC setup. Ha! <laughs> Thanks, Felix. Um, yes, I do have a thick PC setup. This is true. Um, Johnny is now asking me, was it a good day or a bad day? And uh, Johnny, I swear if you continue to spell my name wrong intentionally, I am going to mute you. Um, either ways, I don't know yet, Johnny. I will know in 45 minutes. I will know in 45 minutes.
It is not. It is not time yet, Johnny. Yes, it is not time yet. Um. <sighs> good luck. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. Um. Okay. So first off, I screwed that up. There's supposed to be a space here. Um. Second up, I need to do these. And I need to do these, and then I need to do these, and I need to do this, and then blah, 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 come on, work. There we go. Is that a bone conductor, bone conductor headphone thing, or just a mic? It is a bone conductor headphone thing, as you like to call it. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a bone conduction headset from, I believe... Oh, I can't tell. It doesn't have the name on it, um, but... How come I can't remember what this what these, what these what this thing is called? Hold on. Um, this is a ah uh, yes, this is an aftershocks loop one hundred. Um, so shocks makes it I or or something like that. I don't know. Hold on, Google time. Aftershocks loop one hundred. Yeah, this thing. This is the thing that I have. It's made by shocks. Um, these guys make really good bone conduction headsets. I really like them. Um. Anyways, Pan is asking me, what will I learn in 45 minutes? Um, the fate of the rest of my life, basically. Ah, <laughs> oh, God. Anyways. So, this seems to work. I'm just now going to copy this a couple times in the file. So, we're just going to YYP that and then go to slash 26 and then change it to 27. And then we're going to YYP that again, we're going to go slash 27, and then we're going to change word to 28. And now we're just going to remove these two lines and save. I've also been looking at shocks, but I was wondering if the sound quality was good for music and things like normal videos. Um, yes, I personally believe it is. Um, obviously it won't be as good as something like an over-the-ears, like, set of, um, an over-the-ears set of, like, Bose headsets, like high-quality Bose headsets, headsets or, um, or Sony, but... Because, you know, it's, it's bone conduction. It's not like over the ear, playing in the ear, things like that. But um, I, I personally really like them. Um, something that has to do with college. Well, gee, how'd you guess, Pan? Bose or Sony aren't high quality. No, Bose actually does have some high quality... Um, they have some high quality, like, noise-canceling headsets. Um, that I like. Or at least they used to. I don't know if they still make those anymore. I haven't had a I haven't had a latest generation Bose in, in years. Um, in fact, oh no, my dad's headset isn't here because he's actually traveling right now. But my dad has um, my dad managed to find like a copy of the um the 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 headset like the the over the ear headset that like pilots use. Um, and he says they're amazing, and I agree, they're amazing. Like the sound quality on those headsets is. So good. It's better than anything I've heard, except the Bose the Bose speaker set that we have um, here that's set up. Um, if in case you're wondering what I'm talking about, let me show you. So this giant ass pillar here is a speaker array. It's um it's a phased array speaker. Um, we've got another one over there that you can't see, but nothing beats these things. These things are awesome. Um. But, yeah, anyways, um, that, that pilot headset thingy that he's got is, it's awesome. Um, Bose makes more than decent speakers. Um, these speakers that we have, although I will admit, these are really expensive, the ones that we have. Um, but these are like the ones that they use, like, for music venues, like, acoustic music venues. Um... Because, you know, ac acoustic music has to have that, like, really good quality in order for people to, like, actually, like, get the full, the full sound that's coming out. So, that's what they use. So, we have, like, some of those. Um, nothing beats the sound quality from these things. But, this being said, um, for headphones, I, I'm not the pro. Hello, ex 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 oh gosh, how do I say that? Ex exegetical? Oh, hello. Welcome. Um, how's it going? How are you doing? Um, I love Bose Quiet Comfort. I actually don't know what that is, unfortunately, because I don't, I don't, I don't really use, I don't use Bo, Bose that much anymore. 
X X X E X E E X E Oh god, I don't I don't know if this is like ah sorry 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 man. I tell me how to say your name. <laughs> I suck with names. I'm sorry. <laughs> X is fine. X is fine. It's all good. All right. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Um. Welcome to the stream, though. How's it going? How are you doing, man? KTM EXC. What is this? You guys are just listing like stuff that I don't even know what this is. This is a. This is a. This is a. This is a. This is a dirt bike. I chose a hard word for a name. Can't complain. <laughs> That's fair. Um. Hey Pan, are you are you talking about the dirt bike or what are you talking about? Oh god, no, I did not mean to do that. Oh no, I did not mean to do that. Hold on. Oh, I did not mean to do that either. Now you can. Oh, well, everything is falling apart. Help. Okay, there we go. Pan, I still don't understand how you made that connection, but I'm not going to question it. Um. Oh, everything is now, ooh, everything is now not working. Cool. Um, I also propose that noise canceling is incompatible with a good listening experience. It's great when you're out and about, but at home you want an open back like the Bayer Dynamic 990 Pro. I'm not the sound expert here, Lawnmo. I don't know, but if you say so. <laughs> if you say so. Um, anyways, so back to what I was doing. Um, I think this finally is back to working the way I want it to, so... Let's just do dot slash update rpies.sh. This should update the full folder, um, which is good. Yes, 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 this does work. This is good, this is good. Um, so now it updates the migrations if I do need that. It also upgrades uh, um, It also upgrades the readme if I need that. It also upgrades the cargo, the cargo, the cargo list if I need that too. This is good, we like this. Um, so now it's a matter of uh, getting this stuff to actually work. So now it's time to pull up some of my other stuffs, of which I have many. Um, so this is what? This is 26 here. This here is, I don't know, 28? Sure. Be my guest. What is the second one here connected to? 27. Okay, this is not the machine to be looking at. Where is 27? I need 27. Oh, there's 27. Okay, cool. Let me show you what I'm doing now. Now that I actually vaguely understand which which like which which not folder, um, which thing is which, Felix says I switched from a headphone to just using the speakers of my monitor. Got many head and jaw problems from headphones. Slowly healing, and I've been thinking of getting like a shock to prevent sound from going to the other rooms. Huh. Okay. Oh wait, Han was right. Wait what? Wait, how did Pan actually guess that? I don't even understand, Pan. Okay, Pan. Please, I, I actually no. You did explain your logic, but still, how did you? How did you guess that? Anyways, um, yeah. Personally, headphones for me cause like, um, it causes me like what's it called? Like it, it makes me feel like I'm having a tension headache on the top of my head. That's kind of why I don't wear wear those that often. Um, and that's why I like these. Um. But yeah, something like, um, I, in my opinion, shocks are great. Um, they're, they can be very loud if you want them to be. <laughs> um, they can also be quiet if you want them to be. Um, they've got like, they've got good audio control if you want to do fun funky stuff like pause, unpause, mute. If you've got a microphone, you can mute, um, things like that. Yeah, but I also have a headset with very light clamp force and low weight. It was less bad, but I would still get pain. Ooh, that, that. That must suck. Um, Alright, let's see. Can I pull this up? Will this work? Which one is this? This is... I can't read what that says. That says 27. Okay, cool. That's not what I wanted, but we'll, we'll assign it anyway on my stream labs. Um, so, here's one of them. That is dot .27. So, we're going to make that a little bit smaller. We're going to put that up here. The other one I wanted to show you was one of these. Uh... Of which I can't tell which one it is. It might be this one. Let me see if this works. Yes, this does work. Cool. Okay. 
So now you can see two of my machines, um, 26 and 27. Um, I call them 26 and 27 because that's just based off of their IP address. Um, it's just literally 172, 28, 28, 26, and then this is 27, so that's why I call them 26 and 27. Um, from here, I should have the latest code and the latest cargo toml. Um, what I will need to do is I will need to go diesel migrations run, um, not migration, sorry, my bad, migration, and then diesel migration redo. The table frames does not exist, that's bad. If I run the migration again, that does not work. Okay, this is a problem. Um, this is bad, why does this not work? Um, up.sql? Why does the frames table not exist? This is a problem. Um, if I go diesel setup again, does that work? And if I go diesel migration redo, that won't work because I need to go diesel migration run first um, in order to create the table. Okay, this might have actually worked because that took a little bit. No, the frames table still doesn't exist. What the hell? Why? Hold on. Um, database URL. I'm going to echo the database URL. That does work if I p sql minus u postgres. Um, oh right, I can't do that. I have to go sudo. All right, I'm gonna go for a bit. Um, all right, see you lawnmow. I will see you later. Have fun. Um, postgres. Um, and then if I go p sql here, that did not work. So minus u postgres p sql. Okay, so that does work. And then if I go p sql, uh, then I go on the Rust backend. Let's see if this works. If I go D for the tables, it only has this. What the hell? Why? Why does that do that? I'm so confused. What does messages down SQL contain? Great question. Um, I'm pretty sure it contains... Uh, let's go... What is it? Migrations, messages, and then down SQL? Um, it contains a thing that asks it to drop the table called frames. Um, which should be fine, because in my up.sql, I do have a thing that makes a table called frames. So in theory, this should all work. Um, the reality seems to be that I'm being an idiot and it does not work. <sighs> I don't understand why this isn't working. Um, diesel migration run, but then minus minus database. Oh, that says that's wait, that says base base. No, 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 hold on. Database URL equals. I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna see if I can manually specify the, the database URL and see if it works. This may not work. We shall see. Um, if I try to redo on that, it does not work. Okay. That's a problem. Why is it that this does not work? I do not know. I wish I knew. Um, let me do a little bit of a browsering. Let's see. So if I go diesel migration run does not make table. What is what do I get? Uh Revert, no. Revert, run, no. Hello, back nine. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for following. Um, I can redo this. I can redo all. Ah, why does it not work? <sighs> okay, back up time. I feel like that number that I have there is not accurate. I feel like I've done more than 9. I definitely did more than 9. This is about to be 12. I just haven't been updating the backup count. Whoops. Alright. Alright. <sighs> Time to update this counter to say 12, because it should. Um, at least I think it should. But you know what? Let me double check something to make sure I'm not, like, hallucinating right now. Oh. 
Oh yeah, no, it is actually 12. I am right. Okay, cool. Good. <laughs> I was gonna say. This is vaguely confusing. Anyways, moving on with our lives. Um, why does this not work? What if the problem is that in the source, it's already got the schema? That might be- let me try this. Okay, the schema's back. That's good. Um, let's check the schema. It is wrong! This is a problem. The schema is wrong. Something about the up sequel and the down sequel is not happy. What the hell? Doesn't make any sense. Why is this like this? I've got two create tables here. Huh? Why does this not work? Um, okay, let's go pseudo minus u postgres p sequel minus god, what is the what is the formatting for this again? Uh yes, it's minus c and then this and then this. Could not change all oh, right. Because I need to um could not change directory to that. Yeah. Wait, what? Hold on, I think I did that wrong. Okay, no, this is not- this is such bullshit. What the fuck? Um, p sequel minus u postgres Last back end. Invalid. Oh, wait, no. Shit. Oh, I keep forgetting the way I'm supposed to be doing this. It's supposed to be pseudo minus u postgres p sequel that. Could not change directory. Oh, there's the problem. I found the problem. Okay. It's because I couldn't. Hold on. Q. Fucker. Okay. If I cd and I ls minus la. I bet you the problem is that. Rust backend. No, Rust backend does have Yugo plus RWX. Okay, that's really weird. Um, what is the problem here? <sighs> okay, let's do this. Let's see if this works. If I sudo chmod, um, Yugo plus R, um, star, and I go minus R star, could not access that. That's not a file or directory. Could not access that, that's not a file or directory. Okay, does it come after? Could not access that, no file or directory. How the f do I do recursive? Ah, there we go. Does this work? Maybe. Let's try this again. Okay. If I do this, could not change directory to home Ubuntu Rust backend permission denied. What the f does this mean? Huh? I don't understand. Oh, right. I forgot. I, I should be showing you guys what I'm talking about instead of just swearing. Um, so, look. This here says, could not change directory to this. Problems. Obviously. Um. Uh, See, I don't know why this is saying that it can't change directory to this because permission denied. Um. Oh. Oh, okay. According to what I'm seeing here, it says that the problem is actually that I need to be going chmod og plus og plus rx slash home and slash home slash Ubuntu. Um, maybe I have to sudo that, probably. Yeah, there we go. Um, 
Now if I try this again, this should work. Yes, now it does. So why the hell did that happen? That is so weird. Like if I try this on the other one, does it have the same problem? Yeah, it does. What the hell? Um, diesel migration run. Will that work? And if I redo, will that work? No, that doesn't work. That didn't fix the problem. That was just a symptom. That was just a symptom of some problem. What keyboard do I use, if you may ask? Um, I use... That's a good point. I should put that as part of my stuff. But this is what I use. I use a Logitech something or another um, ergonomic keyboard and the mouse I use is another Logitech ergonomic uh, mouse. Um, I actually have the mouse box right here because I have a travel mouse that I use so it's called the MX Vertical. Um, I use it because for a while um, recently I started having wrist and wrist and forearm problems due to the amount of typing that I do. On a, on a regular basis, so my dad was like, alright, you know what, we're making the switch, you're using ergonomic stuff from now on, and I was like, okay, um, in the end, I actually really do like this keyboard and this mouse, it's, it's very comfortable, um, and I, and I think that the, it fits, it fits my uses pretty well, um, Nice, I was also thinking about getting the mouse, but it's it's a bit it's sometimes a bit hard to accurately click. Okay. Well that's because the people who wrote that review didn't understand that like there's a way to change your there's a way to like virtually change your DPI. They have like a setting for that. Logitech is not that stupid. They have a setting for that. There's a way to like virtually change your DPI. Like if you see here, it's this button here. This button here. If I, like, click the button and then drag left and right, we'll change my DPI. So, I don't know what they were doing, but they were clearly missing something. Alright. So, let's see. Why does this not work? Man. I'm so confused. <sighs> Why does this not work? Oh. Why does this not work? <sighs> I'm crying so much right now, you have no idea. Um, okay. So, turns out, for one, I'm a dumbass. Two, I'm a dumbass. And three, I should probably have read the instructions before I started trying to do any of this. Um, it turns out that actually when you want to make another table, the way you make another table is called you make another migration. Not do the dumbass thing that I did, which is put another table in the same migration. So let's fix that problem. Um, let's go diesel. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. It should be because my VS Code is a little bit short right now. So let's move it up a little bit. There we go. Um, so I'm going to go diesel migration create, um, and it's going to be called frames. Okay, nope, that was not it. So we're going to go create, and okay, that's not how you do it. Is it generate? I, I, as you can tell, I definitely know how to use diesel CLI. Um, generate, um, ooh, what is it called? Frames? Frames. Okay, cool. Um, now let's copy this, uh, into here. And get rid of that. And copy this, um, into here. Okay. Now, if I go diesel... Oh, diesel migration run. Diesel migration redo. There we go. Wait, what? Bruh. Okay, I won't question it, but Diesel is doing something. Okay, I'm just gonna R-sync this and we're just gonna see what happens. No clue what's happening, but it's okay.
moving on from that insanity, um, back to my, where are my terminals? Oh, there they are. Okay, so from here, we're gonna go LS Migrations, and that does have the new one, so we're gonna go Diesel Migration Redo. Um, now if we go Diesel Migration Redo again, and then we go into sudo minus u p sql list, we check the tables, we still don't have the fucking... I'm so mad right now, you have no idea. Um... I don't understand, why is it that this... What is this thing doing? Why does this... Huh? Like... Why does this... Why does it not... <laughs> what can I do with diesel migration? Runs all pending migrations. Oh, there we go. Wait. Oh, wait. Can I go minus minus all? Yeah! Okay, so it turns out that the solution to my problem is called don't be a dumbass, follow the instructions. And, um, don't try to put multiple tables in one migration. Oh, I'm crying so much, you have no idea. I'm crying so much on the inside. Okay, so moving- actually, hold on. Moving on from there, let's go back to this side. Let's go, uh, diesel migration run, because... And then now if we do redo minus all... There we go, this finally I think works. So if I check sudo on this, I check the postgres, this finally has what I need. <sighs> wow, that was nearly such that, okay, no, that was a nightmare. Because it turns out I don't know how to use diesel because I am stupid and I don't read instructions. Okay, now let's just see what happens if I go cargo run, and I'm just gonna do that on both of these. We're gonna watch that happen. Um, in the meantime, I am going to cry and cope and see. No, I'm not actually. I'm just going to think about what exactly I need to do that's left. Um, I so I kind of need to test this first, which is okay. I can test these. Um, the way I'm going to be testing this, I'm just talking out loud my, my thought process. Um, so I fixed the WebSocket system such that it does actually add the frames. The next thing I have to do is I have to, let's see, what do I have to do? I have to, I don't know what I have to do. I have to do something, clearly. Um, I have to test the WebSocket, right, yes. So the way I want to be testing the WebSocket, I guess, is we're going to be feeding it really, really long messages and we're going to see what happens. Um, now that I think about it, my old Postman setup isn't going to work because, um, the post, the old Postman setup doesn't have what I need. So, let me show you what's going on. Um, you obviously don't need to watch this build because that's boring. But, nope, that's not what I wanted. I need to just show you this. There we go. So, this here is the Postman collection that I've made to try to test this stuff. Um, as you can tell... Uh, I've got some, like, some stuff going. Um, I've got basically three identical requests, just going to three different IP addresses. Um, hello NDK, um, welcome to the stream, thank you for following. How's it going? How are you doing? Alright, so, what was I doing? I was updating the street workout counter to 15, there we go. Alright, so, 
this here needs to change. Um, sorry, this here. I was looking at the wrong thing. This thing here needs to change because this does not actually work the way that, um, this actually does not work with the, with the new, the new API that I've built. So I should probably change it. Um, for one, we got rid of this. For two, we got rid of this. Um, for three, we got rid of this. For four, we also got rid of this. Um, is text, we, we renamed this, I re, well, I renamed that, that parameter to is text. Um, and six, is that even called message data anymore? Oh yeah, maybe it is. Yeah, it is. Okay, never mind. We're good. Okay. So this is the new thing we want to use. Let me just double check on my, okay, cool. So it is working. It is doing stuff. This is good. Um, I don't remember why there are so many things that are printing out. Probably due to me and my debug of whatever the hell was happening with the LoRa subsystem like a week ago. But we're going to ignore that for now. And we're just going to test this from this end. So I'm going to make this. I'm going to send this. Um, so the way that this is going to work. Oh, wait. Oh, I can do that. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, anyways, as I was saying before, I got distracted by the way that like Postman works. Um, the way I'm gonna test this is I'm gonna have two different, um, two different clients on the same machine because obviously there are a lot of different test cases for this kind of a communication system. Um, a lot of it is going to be just like testing edge cases of different ways that users will be aligned. So things like two users on one node, one user on each node, two users on one node and one node on the other node, or then adding a third node and seeing how everything goes haywire. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Anyways. So, moving on from there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect both of these and we're going to see what happens. So if I connect these two, um, both of these do connect to the WebSocket, which is good. Um... And then I am going to also, let's see, I guess what I'll do is, yeah, you know what, what I'm going to do is I am going to just keep these two because I was debating trying to add the third one, but the more that I think about it, the more that I realize that trying to test this with like more than what I can already handle is just a terrible, terrible, terrible idea. So we're not doing that. Um, I'm just going to see how this goes. So if I try to read SMS on both of these, it should give me an empty data set because I did rerun the migration, which means that the tables were dropped and they no longer have any data. Um, all right, we're going to try to create. We're going to see what happens. It's going to do this and it is not going to return anything from me. Why is that? Because that thing failed to display a backtrace. The Tokyo timer thingy. Okay, so a, basically what happened here is a thread panicked. Um, at this on a nun value at WebSocket RS17153. Okay, this is what we're going to be looking at. So that thing said RS, um, which one? Sorry, which file? WebSocket. So in WebSocket 171.53, One seventy one, sorry. One seventy one fifty three. Damn you. Okay, fine. Um, we're gonna go map or and then the default will be string from uh SMS and then how on earth does this work? I have no clue how to use this. This is the problem. Um, how do I use map or? That's a great question. Okay, something like this. Got it. Um, S. And then we're just going to go S. Surely this will work. Right? Surely. Okay, yeah, it does work. Why this works? <laughs> It's not like I'm a Rust expert, <laughs> and I don't claim to be one. I am definitely a Rust new. I mean, you know, one month and maybe like a week or so is not nearly enough. Um, 
to, to have this working. Oh, what just happened? My Windows is now bugging out. Okay, cool. Um, so. Let's see. Um, do -do 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 -do. um, hold on. I need to do something really quick. Let's see. Can I do something? Will this work? Will this work? This might work. Okay. Vaguely interesting. Um, I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna do this. And, okay. Did that work? Did that do anything? That did not do anything. Okay, that's very, very, very strange. But I won't question it. Okay, never mind. Whatever. Who cares? As I was saying, moving on from whatever disaster that was. Um. So. What I'm gonna do is... I'm just gonna copy back over this code because I think that was the only issue that I think I saw. Maybe? Question mark. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Um. We're just going to cargo run on these again. Um. And then we're gonna connect the, the client and we're gonna do all that stuff again. Um, obviously the testing part is going to be probably the most painful and the most boring because, you know, you just sit there on Postman clicking a bunch of buttons a billion times and trying to debug why on earth your shit isn't working. Um, on a better note, my app has finally been approved. Or an update for one of my apps has been approved. Which is good. I like this. Um, hmm. Okay, cool. So those are finally done building. I'm going to hide those right now. Um, we're going to connect these two clients and we're going to see how this goes. So if I read SMS here and I create here, this is going to say result frames true, message true. This is good. We like this. I got this back as a message forward, which contains the text here. Okay, good. Now, this is good, but it's not necessarily the end. This here, I believe, is on the same machine. Yes, this is also 26. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna check the database to see how the frames were added. We're gonna see how this goes. So if I go sudo minus u postgres p sql rust backend and I go minus d and I go select star from frames good this is very very good the database now has the entries that we want. Alright. So, moving on from there, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to start sending messages that are a hell of a lot longer. Um, because, you know, can't, can't test the, the frames unless I have a message that is so long that it's longer than one frame. Um, so I'm just going to go, hello world. I am Aiden. I am here writing a very, 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 oh, hold on, very long message to see if the um, message splicing into the frames works because this is my first time testing it and I, of course, being me, have zero, have no clue if this will work. If this will work. The answer is probably no, but it's okay, I will debug it. Alright. This should probably be long enough um, to, to be more than one slice. One more than one frame, sorry. So let's send this and see what happens. Um, oh jeez, that did not work, as you can tell. Um, the message that I got- oh fuck Johnny. I hate you so much. Ah. Uh. Like, Johnny, why can't you save this for like tomorrow? God. Moving on. What happened?
happens tomorrow. I stream again tomorrow, Johnny, is what happens. God. How much do I have to spell it out for you? You know I stream- actually, no, that's not true. I didn't stream last weekend, but you know I generally stream more often on the weekends. What's wrong with using it now, then? Because cringe! That's why, because cringe. Uh. Thou art cringe. Thou art cringest. Dost I understand that? Cringe! Okay, back to lurking. Fine. You know what? Fine. Ah, uh, how do I- can I complete that? I can complete that. Cool. Okay, set this to- what is that? 40 now? Because Johnny hates me? Um, moving on. This did not work because this message is too short. Um, so yeah, that's a problem. <sighs> However, I'm, I am going to check the frames and we're going to see if this actually did frame properly. Did frame, um, did frame select properly. Yes, it did work. Okay, so, good news. The, the, the system I just wrote, the code I just wrote, does work properly. And it does properly splice up the messages into their, um, into their specific, like, into their, into their specific slices. Um, problem two is that, well, you know, um, it doesn't return properly via the, the WebSocket, so I need to figure that out. So, let's get rid of this, let's get rid of this, let's see what happens here. Alright. So, if I go... Hmm... If I go, let's see, message, frames, man, 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 no, where am I trying to fix this? WebSocket, yes. Okay, so I want to send the WS... No, that's actually not what I want to do. I just realized I did this wrong. See, the problem is that the Laura side is now screwed up. Because you see, the Laura side is the side that then forwards things via the WebSocket when they get sent over Laura. So, actually, it's this side that's wrong. So I need to fix that. Um... I can probably just kill all this code. Because I don't think I actually need to do that anymore. Um, because I have this all vaguely under some sense of control. Um, however, I am going to still... I am going to still get the bytes from somewhere. How do I get the bytes? I need to go chunkier as bytes. So in this case, it would just be full bytes here. And we're going to see if this works. Um... Here, MSS is not used, so I'll comment that out so that way it stops complaining. And then we will update RPI's SH, which you can't see because I'm doing that in the background. But now we are going to, now that this has been updated, we are going to, oh, nope, that's the wrong one. Wrong one here. All right. Huh? 11119. What? 11119. The len is 1, but the index is 1. I have no clue what the hell that means, but we're not going to question it, and we're just going to move on with our lives. Um, yeah, I think we're just going to move on with our lives. I don't understand what the hell happened there. Um, I'll, I'll debug that in a second once I get the, like, the actual content working. Um, so yeah. Here goes. Um, oh god, Doomsday has begun. Ah, uh, bit. I'm. You know what? I'm gonna wait until the ad break starts. But. <laughs> holy shit, what is happening here? Holy shit, why is this going on? Why is this thing doing? What are you doing? 
The Len is one, but the index is okay. What do you expect? One fifteen. Oh, that's the problem. Okay. Hi, uh, hello, and, and, um, um, Paulo, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream, how's it going, how are you doing? Um, so the length is one, but the index is one, I guess it's back for time. There's another backflip. Let me add to the counter. That is now, what, 14? I think it's 14. Anyways, so it is now time for me to uh, uh, go check the thing that I said that I was going to check at 7 p.m. Um, I'm going to run an ad break, and I guess I, I will be right back. Um... So yeah, I will see you guys in a few minutes, like, when I'm done, when I'm done. I'll be back.
Silence over breakfast Only words that leave your mouth oh, I think we need to end this You know it's better for us So I know that A bunch of the guys from Era are here um, Anna Anna Kindiv I'm assuming you're Stasia, right? I think you're Stasia Or are you Porf? I think you might be Porf, actually. You're Porf, now that I think about it. Yeah, you're Porf. Um, Ma is here. Mango's here. Um, I have bad news, and I have bad news. Um, one, Anson is like, give me the good news. Yeah, I have bad news, and I have bad news, unfortunately, Anson. Um, I was rejected. Um, I was not. I was not deferred. I was rejected. Um, NA's last hope, as Ma is spamming in general, is yes. It is. Era's last hope has fallen. Um, the second bad news is nobody else that I've talked to got in either. We were all denied. The, our, I haven't talked to Ben Rubin yet, but all of us, all of us got screwed. Um, I, I wish I, I wish I knew what I could have done better, but I don't know. I haven't talked to Udai yet, but, um, Requiem and, and, uh, BMR, you guys know who I'm talking about. I'm using pseudonyms so that way I don't accidentally dox people, but... They both got rejected. We... 2023 as a whole has gotten completely fucked sideways. Nothing we, nothing we can do now. We weren't deferred, so... Um, no, Pan. Um, Sova, Shelba did not apply to, um... Did not apply, did not apply where I applied, but yes. It's unfortunate. There's... There's nothing I can do about it now. Can't reply, so I, I just I just gotta let it go. I just gotta let it go. It's it is it is saddening though. It is saddening. <laughs> you forgot to follow. Thanks, Anson. Um, I know a video game server was saying, "Hey, do I do tech support?" Um, uh, yeah, I usually usually do. Just you know. Going through a little bit right now. Going through a little bit. Right now. I guess... I guess the answer is it, it was not meant to be. Um, unfortunately, no matter what I did, there's just an Asian diff, Chinese diff, Chinese applying CS diff. I, I can't break through it. No matter how hard I try. I'm really not looking forward to doing more subs, though. That's the part that I hate the most, is that I'm really not looking forward to filling out the rest of those subs. Whatever. I gotta, I gotta let it go. I gotta let it go. Um... I guess... I owe... At least software engineers don't need a degree to define any- to find a job. Um, yeah, that's fair, but... Um, I mean, 
Okay, I I'll just say it, but I applied to Stanford because, um, you know, I I want to become a tech entrepreneur, and that that is basically the place, the only place on this planet to be doing that kind of a thing. But it was not meant to be. It was not meant to be. Um, I. I guess they say this, and it's probably true. I mean, we're the top 1% of New York City. We have to get in somewhere. Maybe. Hopefully. We probably will get in somewhere. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's disheartening. Apparently, um, I went for an MBA. No, um, I, I, I don't think Stanford does... Majors, actually no, I, I think they do. Um, I went for a for a, for CS, but yeah. Um, apparently the guy who had legacy at my school. Um, for those of you who know I'm who I'm talking about, it's Ruben. Um, he got deferred, but. That's just, that's just a straight up just fucking legacy difference. I mean, he got deferred because he has fucking legacy. I mean, there's nothing I can do there. I, I, I was, we were all, everybody else was fucked from the start compared to him. Because he has legacy. Whatever. I, I just need to move past it. Just mental strong. Don't tilt. Don't tilt, and I guess I guess it will be fine. Just don't tilt. <sighs> I guess I do owe two backflips to chat because video game observer did did um did follow and so did Anson. Um, um, I will read your thing in a little bit. Video game observer. Um, oh. Uh, I you I oh man I'm asking this thing as you put the door. Um. Well, no, I well, Ma, I don't think you're allowed to. I don't think you're allowed to reapply. Regular decision if you get if you get denied early. I don't think that's allowed. Um. Same thing happened with Penn. I mean, yeah, it's just there's there's nothing we can do. Um. Oh, the tech entrepreneur thing. Yes, okay, that's fair, yeah. I mean, yeah, you're right. It's still doable. It's just, you know, won't get that boost thing. And the pen legacy thing, yeah. I mean, it's that, there's, that, there's that problem with every Ivy, no matter what you do. They're all going to prioritize the people who who, who have legacy. I mean, I have legacy at Columbia. I, I mean, I could, I, I just, I could get applied. I, I, I'm going to apply to Columbia. It's just, you know. It's really disheartening. Ah, Maflo is asking, what is legacy? Um, so for those of you who are not in the United States and don't understand our college application system, um, basically, if your parents or your grandparents or anyone who has come before you has, a, has gone to that school or... If one of your siblings is going to that school, or what? No, siblings do count for some for some schools. Um, then you get priority application status at that school. And typically, um, schools do a thing like, for example, um, automatically defer you um, in when, when you apply early, or they automatically put you on the wait list for their school if you apply. So basically. If you have a reasonable application, you're pretty much guaranteed to have some chance. For the rest of us, we're all fucked. We have, like, basically no chance compared to those people. So, there's nothing we can do. Oh. Like, for example, I have Legacy at Columbia because 
my dad went there, but I mean, if you want to go anywhere else, it's just you gotta you gotta swim against the tide. You have to swim against the entire fucking ocean to get there, and it's it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, that's Ma says. <laughs> GG well played, getting smacked in the face. Yeah. It's this is this is kind of just like getting smacked in the face. But as I said, just just gotta just gotta not tilt. Just don't tilt. There's an anti there's an anti Asian script. <laughs> I mean, you're probably right, Parth. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah, <laughs> that's the only way to, that's the only way to, to put it. Um, I mean, the thing is, is that I heard that at least Chris got Notre Dame, Brandon Lou is the last hope. Where did Brandon apply? I actually don't know where he applied. MIT, oh. <laughs> That's coming out tomorrow at noon. <laughs> NA is currently falling apart, as we do in every single sport. Oh, fuck. Yeah. It's just... There's nothing we can do. I mean, even if we are the top students in the city, there are so many cities. There's not enough slots for all, all these people. I mean... No matter how much we try to stack the deck in our favor, there's always some chance that we... It's its it, its always just half RNG. It's half RNG, and that's the only way to put it. Um, and... We just rolled, but luckily... Didn't roll a nat 20, so... No admit. And yeah, as as um as as someone else said, GG G, 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 go next, go next life. Yeah, literally. I mean. Anyways, enough of me ranting and crying about the fact that I basically didn't get into Stanford. Um, time to get back to what I was doing because well, shit has to get done no matter what. Here we go. So. So what is plan B? Um, plan B is I apply to a whole bunch of other colleges, regular decision and pray I get into one of them. Columbia Rage. <laughs> true. Honestly, Johnny, true. Um, apparently I do because of legacy get like automatic waitlist, so I'll take it. I mean, you know. All right, so what we were doing? We were doing this. Does Columbia also have law? Um, law, like a, like a law school? Yeah, I believe it does. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's pretty good for law school. Yes, yeah, I mean, I know Columbia has a law school. Um, although I honestly probably would still go there for like a for like a CSWE kind of a thing, um, because that was my plan to begin with. I think this was also mentioned in the Suits TV show. I actually don't know that show because I don't watch TV that much, but... Um, okay, so we were debugging this before everything went to shit. Um... 115.19, um...
and it's copia we will just make big business <laughs> true honestly just uh just high on the copium right now so high on the copium all right so we were trying to debug uh, Laura, Laura.rs uh, line 15, uh, column 19. So let's do that. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me actually fix my counter first because I never did that. There we go. All right. So here we go. So we're going to go to Laura, the Laura bus file. It said line 115, column 19. So that means here the PL split did not have, did not work properly and we need to figure this out. Okay, so, um, what we're going to do is, um, why did this not work is the question. So, why did that not work? See, 115, oh, oh, I know why. Because this only works on the first one. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah, that's the way that works. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. So this is not the way that I'm going to do this. Yeah, I have to do something very, very, very different. Okay. So just looking at this really quick. Um, actually, no, I have to look at my schema because my, my SQL file no longer has everything, but. Okay. Um, oh yes, sorry, sorry, Observer. Yes, I said I'd do that. One second. Um. Oh, you've got to be shitting me. How the fuck did... How the fuck did a DS get in? Damn it. These fucking people. I swear I'm going to fucking... Okay. I'm just going to calm back down. We're going to go back and see what's going on. All right. So. Okay. So I got a new PC and a 3070 and an i7 something and I spent 2000, but it only has 16 gigabytes of RAM. When I use it, it's like 20 to 30% RAM usage when idle. Is that bad? Um, 20 to 30% idle is okay. I mean, I, I have like, it's like 80 while gaming. Okay, yeah, no, you should be fine. So long as you're not hitting like above 90, um, you should be fine. I would personally suggest though, that if you want to do multiple things at the same time, like if you want to run like 10 Chrome tabs and game at the same time, I would suggest like at a minimum 32 gigs. Um, I don't think 16 gigs will cut it for running things like multiple Chrome tabs and games. Um, because unfortunately, like, you know, 16 gigs isn't isn't that much. Um, um but yeah, that's 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 my um that's my two cents. And get 2x16? Yes, I would personally suggest getting 2x16. So, let's see. Yeah, um, hope that helps. Um, apparently... So using 4 isn't ideal. Um, I mean, okay, here's the thing. If you were to get 4 by 8 um... I personally wouldn't suggest 4 by 8 I would suggest 2 by 16 Um, I don't, I don't think getting more... More, 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 more RAM cards is, 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 is necessarily the best choice. Um, unless, of course, here's the thing. If you want to keep the 2x8 you do have, then, 
if you want to keep those and you don't want to like have like random sticks of ram um just hanging around then yeah you could get another 2x8 and then just have two a uh, 4x8 which gives you 32 um i saw you have 4x32 yeah i do um it is yes it is a lot um if yeah that's i mean okay yeah that's all i'm going to say if you want to keep the ram you do have and just put more in then yeah get get another 2x8 and that'll work um, if you want to replace, how much does 132 cost? That's a great question. I don't know, actually. Um, I should have the model, um, of the RAM I have listed in the, in the, in the, in that area. Um, so you can just, I'm sure you can just copy paste it and just see. Um, I actually don't know off the top of my head. Because it's been a while since I did that upgrade. Yeah, alright, cool. Oh, apparently, um... If any of if any of Era is still here, um, turns out Adis is a, a double math accelerant. How fun! I definitely enjoy um, taking what is it? Past vector calc. What is that? Like fucking? Um, I don't even know what calculus. While you're a senior, ah uh, yes, I very much enjoy that. Thank you very much. No, thank you. I don't want to do that. I just I I I can't even anymore. Whatever. I I I give up. There's no point in arguing. <sighs> Moving on with our lives. <sighs> so, I have this thing here. Um, I have the is sent on the frames. Which is a problem because... Hmm... So yeah, this is not good. This does not do what I want it to, because you see, every time I send a frame... Yeah, this is not... Okay. This is, this is, this is not a good idea. Um, what I should do is I should do what my dad originally said, is, and I should have a third thread. The only way that this will work is if I have a third thread, and the third thread... Um, does what I'm expecting with regards to processing messages into frames, and and then when the frames are fully sent, then sending out the message. Um, yeah, that's, this is the only way that this is going to work. I can't I can't do this otherwise. It's not otherwise this gets too complicated because the way that my current um, Laura transceiver loop works is I I read from the I read from the from the buffer and then I send one message. So unless I change it so that I send the cluster of messages, this isn't going to work, and I can't do it that way. Um, I think, yeah, I think this involves a whole restructure of the entire thing. Which is unfortunate, but, but we move on. Um, so, here we go. I guess it's time to do a full restructure. Um, all we gotta do is, let's see. So, um, hmm. I guess what I'll do is I'll, I'll make a new file. This will have a new Tokyo um, async generator, which will be fine. Um, I guess it's just time to figure out what I need to name this. Um, hmm. What would I name this? Because you see, what this function, what this thread will do is it will do a combination of converting messages to frames and then sending messages back over the web server in the event that in the event that all of the frames have been sent so i should really write some of this out that would probably be a good idea um but i still need to name the file which is a problem so before i can start like you know writing my writing my stuff um so what would i what would i call this um, I guess I'll just call this message converter.rs. 
and we're just going to start writing some comments. Um, actually, no. First off, we're going to actually mod that here. Um, let's see if I can do this. So, mod Laura and web server here, because I want these to be at the top, because these are the things that I'm running, and now I want to mod message converter. Okay, so... First things first, let's write out a plan. So the plan is, we're going to have one function, um, convert, so actually no, we're going to start out, so it's just going to be, this is going to be, um, build, so start conversion thread, start conversion thread. What this function will do, is it will have an infinite loop. In that infinite loop, we will make it so that it, one, um, checks, uh, so it runs, um, message convert to frames function, and then it does, um, websocket forward fully sent message and loop. I think this is, I think that's the entirety of the thread, which I think is okay. Um, then we're going to have fn conf, um, message convert to frames. Okay, I guess Pan is making me do a GSU. Alright, here we go. I guess we do a GSU. Here we go. Um, I will need to take- um, I'll take a second to set up. Give me one minute. Um, alright. So. Ah. I need to pull up GSU on YouTube. So, that will take a second. Um... Ruby flower. And then we take Ruby flower. Special request for dad to also come. Unfortunately, Pan, my dad is actually traveling right now. So he is not here, and so he cannot do the GSU with you. But when he gets back, we'll do it together. Ah. Oh, nope. At first. I swear, I keep getting these ads for this thing called Back Market, and I don't understand what it's about. It's like some refurbishment tech market thing on the ball that I can't seem to understand. Anyways, moving on. We're moving on with the borders. I am not laying on the mad code. It looks like I am, but I'm not. You look. Oh no, you can't see still. So.
I actually disagree, Code. You, have you ever tried it? Doing it this way? It actually makes it harder. And also, no, I'm not laying on my hands. I'm not entirely laying on my hands, at least. What do you mean I'm doing it too fast? I'm literally following the song. I am not your PT. I have to pay you. You have to pay me if you want more information. I'm good, man. Ah, I'm good. All right. Let's change that. That hurts. My arms hurt. Uh, Push-up counter is now at 70. Okay. So, oh wait, hold on, I forgot to get rid of that, there we go. Um... <sighs> so, what I'm gonna do is, I guess this one will be... Um... Filter Frames... By... No, hold on. So this will have a loop of some kind. What this loop will do... Oh right, yes, that's what I was doing. Um. So I'm going to make a, so it's going to have a loop, and it's going to go, or well, actually no. So we're probably going to go something like for each, um, or maybe what I'll do is I'll have a is converted column and an is sent column, or is forwarded column. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Um... You know, I actually have a question. What is the current way that this is built out? Oh no, I can't test it. Never mind. Okay, so if we get met, so in this because you see, here's the thing. If I try to for loop the entire thing. This becomes an order n problem when this could be when this could be an order one problem if I just add more columns to my table. So maybe the solution is just add more columns to the table. Um, in which case it will be find first message not um, not co um, with um, com to frame equals false. Then we're going to go.
Um, hmm. So, find first message with conf to frame equals false, and then, um, uh, do the split. We have this code already. Do the split, um, and add each, add each frame. We have this code. This should be good. And then here, I guess I would go FN forward fully sent message. We would go, I guess, find first message with, um, uh, forward done or has been forward equals false. Then we go, oh no, hold on. And then we go set conf to frame equals uh, to true. And then here we would go um, uh, filter by um, filter frames by, ooh, I don't know. What do I filter frame by? That's a great question. I guess I would probably filter frames by, um, by, um, by timestamp. So, um, let, um, MSG is equal to find first MSG. So find by MSG dot timestamp and msg dot source mac um so yeah we would filter by that and then we go if um actually no so we would go um so this would be what let frames this would be a so this would be a vac um of frames just doing some pseudo code here so for uh for frame, frame, frame in frames. Um, so for frame in frames, then. Okay, actually, so we would need to do this. Um, we would need to go let um, all frames sent equals false. Um, sorry, equals true. And we're going to go for frame in frames. Um, all frames sent is equal to all frames sent and um, frame dot has been sent. And then we go N4 and then here we would go um, if all frames, all frames sent, um, then we would go, I guess, If all frames have been sent, then we would go... I guess send WS, um... Send WS. I know this is not the exact formatting, obviously. I'm just, you know, pseudocoding this. Um, so we would send WS with the message. Or with the RTN... Um, with the WS return version of the message of MSG. And then we would go, and then we would set has been forward equals true. I think this is a good pseudo code plan of the entire thing. Um, this pretty much covers everything I need to know. And it removes all of like the weird little things where like I was calling like WebSocket stuff in the Laura side and all sorts of weird little things like that. Like, it'll be fully, each thread will be fully separated and it won't call anything else that it doesn't need to outside of its own networking system. So I think that's a good idea. Um, this shouldn't be that hard. I have some of the code I would need for this already. Um, basically all I would need to do is I would just need to use essentially some of the stuff from Laura because the Laura.rs has this start transceiver function that creates the Tokyo, the Tokyo, the Tokyo async future that then I can create 
that joy creates the thread with an async future that then I can join with my other threads, with my other Tokyo threads, and then, you know, do some stuff. Um... So, I guess I'll copy this for now, because this is similar. I'm going to need an infinite loop, um, and that infinite loop will, will be, as you can tell, calling these two, will be calling these two functions, that's all we'll be doing. So we're going to do this really quickly. So we're going to go, um, start converter is equal to this, give me my users, give me my PG con pool. Okay, we're going to increase, um, hello QInk. Thank you for following. Welcome to the stream. How's it going? I will do my bag flip in just a second once I get my shoes on again. Um. Alright. All right, so let's just update the back counter, make it 17. Well, that's a lot of backflips I've done today. Maybe I should chill out on this so I don't break my knees by accident. And so. Um, let's see. Um, doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. let's see what's going on here. Oh, cool. Apparently, oh, god damn it, Johnny. Okay, fine. Um, apparently, there is an overwhelm custom happening in 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 Rosaya. Okay, cool. <laughs> Push up, sign up. Hey, Johnny, you're in that call. What's going on there? Come on, Johnny. I know you're there. Unless you're unless you're muted. Maybe maybe you have Twitch muted. Ah, uh, SMH. All right. So back to this. I need to import a whole bunch of pipes. Um. So let's quickly go use uh, super custom types and camera. All oh, right, yes, thank you. Um, so we're gonna use all the custom types. We're going to import. Oh, I have no clue which time that is. Um, I should probably figure that out though. Let's see, what does that use? That uses Tokyo time figured because this is a Tokyo function we're running this in. Um, no, I mean keep the camera. What do you mean, keep the camera? What? Huh? Are you just trolling me now? Bruh. Okay, whatever. Oh, that's why you meant keep the camera. Okay, sure. Um. Uh. Uh, Karoti. That's a great question. Yes, you are trolling me, Pan. Good job. Yes, you are definitely trolling me. Um. I guess, um, I'll do, I'll do this. I hope you're happy, Pan. You trolling, you little troll. Alright. So... 
We're not doing any cereal stuff here, so I don't need any of that. Um, I'm going to need this stuff, but... Um, do we only know karate? Maybe some... I do not know Muay Thai specifically. Um, I know a little bit of Aikido. Um, I know a little tiny bit of Judo. But even then, I've probably forgotten all, all the Judo. Um... But yeah, mainly karate, kabuto, and um, and tricking. Time helpers, maybe? Will that work? Maybe that will work. That does work. Cool. Um, we're gonna change this to not be lore interval. It's going to be um, conf interval. Um, we're gonna just go print line. We're gonna go the macro print line. Um, these things are not used, and I know that, but that will be used very, very soon. Um, so we're gonna copy some of- I know there's a whole bunch of, like, stuff here that I need. So basically, we're going to copy this kind of a thing. Um, so basically, I need- I need this. I need this entire thing here. Um, and that will be for this one. So if I go pub fn um, convert, mess, um, conf to frames, then we're gonna go like this, like this, like this, this is going to do this, and this will need to import, uh, message, so I guess what I'll do is I'll go, uh, you, use, super, uh, message, we're gonna stop that there, um, I do need the connection, so this is where things become useful. Um, I will need the con, so the con will be passed in here. So if I don't want the serial, I can kill that there, but I pass in the users because I will need the users again. So I guess what I'll do is I'll actually take a take a take a hint from from this one right here, which takes a, P, a mutable PG connection, which I can stick right here. Um, and then I can also take the users list for when I need it. Okay. Actually, wait, I don't need the users list here because this does not do any sending of your WebSocket, so I can actually leave it there. Um, we're going to import PG, PG connection from Diesel. Um, this is obviously going to do a whole bunch of things that are unhappy. Regex, we are going to import Regex because I do need that for now. Um, frame, I do need to use frame from here, so let's go use super frame. Um... Ooh, uh, yeah, I need to change this, right? Conf to frames. Wait, that's not what I wanted. Conf to frames. Yes, there we go. And don't uh, wait on that, but that's not an async, so let me change this to an async function here. Um. Alright. So, from here, um, let's see. Oh, jeez. I just accidentally knocked out one of the speakers I have. Whoops. Um, alright. So, this isn't exactly what I need, actually, so we're not going to do any of this because I don't need that. Um, we're going to kill that there. Um, this is vaguely correct. Um... Yeah. This is vaguely correct. I need to start, um, adding, like, the... I need to add, like, the, the filters to the models, so here we go. Um, this is not it. That's, like, the bulk. All of these, I'm pretty sure, are irrelevant now, because these don't exist anymore. But maybe I'm just confused. Actually, no, maybe they are still relevant. You know what? I'm not going to question it. I'm just going to move on with my life. Um, so if I go to the message.rs, this has an extra space there. Let's get rid of that real quick because we don't like extra white space. It's stupid. Um, so I need a new filter is what I'm hearing. Um, I, or here's the thing. I could do a new filter or actually, you know what? I think I'll just do a new filter because it seems to be the easiest way to do this. 
Um, insert new, 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 get this, blah. Wait, I never even use... What? I, oh no, I do use it. No, wait, that's the wrong one. That's insert. Where's filter? There it is. Oh yeah, I never implemented this. Okay, cool, that's good. So, that means what we're going to do is we're going to just delete this here. And we're going to use this filter again. Um, because this filter is very, very useful indeed. Mmm... Hmm. So, I guess here we go. I'll just make a new function. Um, so this is insert, this is select by name. I dug, okay, you know what? Not going to question it. Um, I'm just going to do this. We're going to, no, actually this goes above here because that's a, that's a bulk message. I want to keep all the ones that are related to messages, um, together. So we're going to go pub fn get by filter. Um, and we're gonna go con, uh, and mute pg con, um, and it's going to return a vector of messages, and we're going to do that, and it's also going to take in a fil- I can't see what that says, we're gonna take in a filter that is a message filter. And from here we're going to go, um, all messages, and I'm just gonna go- dot filter oh is that not how this works no that is how it works um messages dot filter by um hello Ma mark mark Rav. oh god i'm probably saying that wrong hello mark Rav. welcome to the stream thank you for following how's it going how are you doing how's your day been There's the back foot for Mark. Um, funny enough, that, that reminds me of um, the Hollow Knight boss, Markov. But I know it's probably not actually related to Markov. Anyways, um, so we're gonna go filter by uh, messages. Uh, date? No? God damn it, what is it called? Um, it's called Source Mac. Oh, right! That doesn't exist anymore. Oh, so that means I just have to I just have to filter by time. That's actually really easy then. So if I just go messages message time um, dot e message data. How on earth did I do this previously? Oh, dot eq um, filter dot message time. And from here we can now uh, load it into an array of messages. Expect error. And then just send that off as is. It should do fine. Um, the problem here is that this doesn't implement a system time. That doesn't make any sense. This should be fine. So it says the trait bound for system time as diesel expressions text. Oh, I'm an idiot. That's why. Because all these messages... Oh, shit! I'm a dumb ass. That's a good thing to know. Um, right, so I can't even do any of this, because this is all just stupidity. I don't even know why I started writing this function, because none of this function even, like, does anything that I want. Okay, first off, delete this. No. This is actually supposed to be, um, get first, um, unconverted, um, message. So, we're going to frame... Okay, here's where I need to actually start doing stuff. So, let's comment out this whole function so I stop getting, like, stupid errors. Um, then we're going to go over to my uh, messages up sequel, and we're going to change this. So, this now needs to have more, more parameters. So, the parameters I need here are going to be... Um, has been conf... And we're going to do this, we're going to do this, and it's going to be boolean, not null. And then we're going to go, uh, has been, oh, that's not how I want it to be, has been forward, and it will be uh, another boolean, not null. 
And then from here, I'm going to redo all the migrations. Um, that did not work. We're going to run all the migrations. And then we're going to redo all the migrations. And that didn't work because the stupid schema is not updating. Actually, wait, it might be. Never mind. I lied. It does all work. Actually, why the fuck? Huh? I don't understand what's happening. But you know what? We're not going to question it. The, the, the migrations... Like, Diesel is just currently crying itself to sleep, apparently. Um, I just... Uh, um, I'm not going to question it. We're just going to move on with our lives. Um, so for one, uh, this message is going to, this is going to need to have more bulls. So this is going to be, what is this? What did I put in the update sequel? Has been conv and has been forward. So this is going to be a boolean. Um, this is going to be pub has been, oh, that's not what I wanted. Has been forward and that's going to be also a boolean. Um, so that's going to take that. That's going to set off a bunch of errors in other places, but that's okay. We're not going to be dealing with that for now. Um. This code here is all going to go, so I'm just going to not bother to, to do that right now. Um, basically, what needs to happen is create new message from string is going to... Yeah, so that's going to do that. Insert message is going to take an insert message. Insert into table. Values execute. Ah, right. Yes. This is what I needed to do. Default true. Sorry, default false. I'm being a little bit of a small brain right now. Um, and then we're going to go default false here as well. Um, it should be fine um, because insert message has username, message data, bulk name is text. That covers everything that is not... Let's see. Message name is text... Wait, that's the frame. Shit, hold on. Username, message data is text... Bulk name. Yeah, all of that is covered here. Okay, we're good. We're good. Um, I don't need to worry about this anymore. Um, so... I just realized that maybe I don't actually need to do this, which is because of the fact that I have a default there. Um, actually, no, I do have to because of the fact that... That, um, Surday's processing requires that in order for it to, to properly work, right. Yeah, no, I have to keep that. Okay, never mind. Forget what I'm saying, I'm spewing kind of nonsense right now. Um, we're going to do this, so message time, no, so instead of that, we're going to go um, has been conv, um, dot eq false. And it's going to return the first message, so we're going to first um, dot, shit, what is it? Um, dot limit, yes, dot limit one. Um, we're going to sort by descending, no, we want to sort by ascending, actually. Because we want to, um, we want to get the first one, which means, buddy, go away. Okay, so we're going to sort by ascending, and then we're going to limit to the first one, and then we're going to load it, and we're going to send it. Um, this should be fine. I should be good here. This should be a one length vector, which should be fine. Um, I'm fine with that. This does what I want now. So, okay, so here we're going to go here, we're going to go like this, we're going to go like this, we're going to go, um, um, message. So this message is equal to, uh, this, which is an unconverted message, which takes the con and does that, which means the frames did insert boolean is now true. Um, the frames body is now equal to message, username, and message, message data. Um... Oh, right, yes, hold on, zero. I need to take the zeroth element, there we go. Okay, the rest of this should be pretty much okay. We just gotta change nm to, to msg, because that's the new name of our function. Um, there is no map or on strings, which is good, which means we can just take this out here. Um, cannot move out of... Ah! We cannot move out of that index because that message does not implement copy. So why don't I just implement copy? Unless I want to take the reference, in which case, does taking the reference screw everything up? It does? But I can clone, I can clone the strings, which is less memory usage than cloning the object, so I guess I'll do that. 
Um, cloning them, cloning that is better than that, so it's fine. Um, and now we just insert all the frames, and that should be good. This seems to compile. Um, all I need to do now is now I just need to do this. Um, I need to take this code here, which is everything I don't need. And then we're going to move it over to here. Um, and so this is going to be, this is going to go in this function. So we're going to function, um, pub fn, um, forward, uh, ws, forward, um, sent message. We're going to probably take a con here because I'm imagining I will need a con. Um, hello, Brody PGR. Thank you for following. How's it going? How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Oh, and hello, Mr. Anderson. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for following. How's it going, y'all? How are you doing? Alright, and one more. Alright, let me update the counter to 20. Um, a lot of backflips today, but hey, I mean, it always does mean good channel growth. Alright, so... This is having a whole bunch of problems. We need to know what the frames are. This is... Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm too, I think I'm too tired to deal with this today. Um, I've moved around a whole bunch of code. There's a whole bunch of stuff that are doing okay right now. Um, I think I'm just going to let it be. Um, I will... Hello, Whelan. Um, I think... This is, this side, trying to do this conversion won't be too hard, um, because I don't actually, there's not actually that much to do here. Um, I've written a lot of the code already in one form or another, so it should be fine. Um, it's just a matter of just pushing through it and, pushing through it and getting it done. Um, however, as you can probably tell, I am, I am kind of exhausted, um, for a multiple for a multitude of reasons so i think what i will do is i will just i will just leave it there um i'm just gonna add this here so that way it stops complaining about this problem here and then i think we will just call it a day um this no longer has so many so many things it wants to cry about which is good um Actually, I will need the users here now that I think about it because this has the users here So I actually will need the users finally. So let me just write one last thing for this header So I don't forget and then I will call it an end of stream as soon as I do the backflip for Whalen. Um, This here needs to take con and users Which does work, but we can't move that so we need to take a reference to that That's not the way that that works that's kind of annoying. Maybe I just users.clone. Okay, I just users.clone. Um, that seems like a really suspicious way to be doing it. I wonder how I did it in the lower side. Um, I don't think I did it that way in the lower side. Uh, con, you. Oh, I know. I took and users. Oh, I took a reference to users. Okay, let's do that. Hold on. Let's see if I can do this. Um, and users. No, expected that kind of a struct. Ah, right, because I need to expect a, a reference to the users. Right, there we go. Okay. Cool. It compiles. Um, there's obviously a whole bunch of work that needs to get done, but as I said, I'm going to be ending the stream here. Let me just do that one back back for wheeling, and then I'll end it. All right. Well, as I said, that's all I got for you today. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, if you enjoyed, please do consider following me. Um, if you have Prime, please do consider, subscri please do consider subscribing. Um, even if you don't, I would very much appreciate the support. And other than that, 
that's all I got. Have a good day, y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Or whenever I stream next. Probably tomorrow.